Okay, this is the required practical for uh, Hooke's law, which is how the extension of a spring uh, changes when you uh, add mass to the end of the spring. So here we've got a very simple experimental setup. We've got a spring, and on there I've just got a way of seeing where the end of the spring is, because the, the difficult thing here is, is to be as accurate as you possibly can. And it's quite difficult to measure the length of a spring when it's next to a ruler and you've got a, a gap between where the end of the spring is and the scale. So ideally you need something that extends across from where the end of the spring is and points on the scale. Now what we've got here is just a pin and some blue tack. Uh, other stuff can be used but they're all doing the same. And when you read it it's important so you might not be able to see them off camera but you need to look on a level so that you're reading on a, across a horizontal line you're reading the, where the pin is on the scale. Okay so at the minute we've got a spring and you should be able to see that it's got an unstretched length of six centimeters and we can go down here to the nearest millimeter if you have a look I'm going to be capable of reading uh, in t to like uh, to 6.1 mil, 6.2 mil, whatever it was and if everything stops moving I'm fairly happy that's about six Mill. So we're going to say the unstretched length or the original length is six centimeters. Sorry. Then what we can do, we can place on 100 grams. Okay. Now I've just put on 100 grams, so I've applied a mass, and this is just a chance to revise something that you might not have done fully yet. But when we apply a mass onto the end of a spring, then gravity is pulling that mass down, so that this mass we we say has weight. And the conversion that you do is that 100 grams is actually equal to 1 newton. Because on Earth we, we know that gravity is 10 newtons per kilogram. And if this is 100 grams, we know that this has now got a weight of 1 newton. So I've put 1 newtons on this spring. And you can see, if you let that settle, it's going to be something like 10, 10.2 centimetres. Now bear in mind... That's the, the extended length with, the, mat, with the, the weight on. Originally we were 6, so this has gone down to 10.2, so we're interested in the extension. So the extension of the spring is going to be the difference between 10.2 centimetres and the original length of 6, which would be 4.2 centimetres. So in a minute when you see some results, that's what we'll be after, and we'll just continue this so you, so you can see what we're going to be doing. So if I now put 2 newtons on, and this extends, you can see there we're about 15 centimetres, and then I do three. Okay, that looks about 19.5 centimetres. Bear in mind again, 19.5 minus the original six, this would give me an extension of 13.5 centimetres. And we could continue and add all our masses. Okay, so here we've got the data from the, the practical you've just seen. Remember we had mass, 100 grams, we did up to 500 grams, and this was the conversion into weight. We said 100 grams is 1 newton, etc. 200 grams is 2 newtons. If you remember, the, the original length of the spring was 6 centimetres, and then we recorded the new extended length for each of the masses added, or the weight added, and then from that we've effectively gone 10 minus 6 gives us an extension of 4. 14.6 minus 6 gives us an extension of 8.6, etc. So you should have done all that in lesson. Then we put that on a graph and we end up with a graph of extension against weight, which looks like this. This is a straight line uh, because we know that for a spring that obeys Hooke's law, that the extension is proportional to the weight added. And really what we've got to do from this graph, we've got to try and use the graph to come up with a value for the spring constant. Okay, now this is what you've got from your lesson. You know that the force applied is proportional to the extension, so we say that the force is equal to k times the extension. Uh, F is equal to ke, where k is equal to the, the spring constant. So if we just rearrange that, I'm going to say k equals the force divided by the extension, F divided by e, so I've divided this side by e, and divided that side by e, and the e's have cancelled. We know the units for k from this are newtons per metre. So the spring constant is how much force you need to stretch, a how much force you need to apply to stretch a spring by one metre. Okay, now if you look at our graph, we've got to think about this because the gradient of this line, remember the gradient 
is the change in this axis, which is the change in the y axis, divided by the change in the x axis. So that's going to be E divided by the force E over F. So K is F over E. So we've got to think that whatever the gradient is, we need to inverse or, or flip the gradient and do 1 divided by the gradient. Okay, because, because we've said our gradient is E divided by F. And we know that the spring constant is F divided by E. So if we do that, let's put some numbers on here. Uh, I think that the, in, the, the change in the y-axis, it goes from 5 up to 19. You can check this if you want afterwards, but 5 up to about 19, I've said, which is 14. That's 14 centimetres. I've converted that into metres. So I've got a change in y of 14 metres. Uh, 14 centimetres or a, a change in the extension of 14 centimetres. Down here on the x-axis, on the force axis, our weight, we're going from 1.2 to 4.4, so 1.2 up to about 4.4, so again the change there is 3.2 newtons. So our gradient is 0.14 divided by 3.2, which gives us an answer of about 0.044. I've rounded that to, to the three decimal places. Remember what we said, that our gradient, we need to do 1 over the gradient. So we need to do 1 divided by 0.44, and that comes to 22. So what is 22? 22 is the spring constant K. So our units are newtons per metre. So we would say that 22 newtons would stretch the spring by 1 metre. Okay, so the graph that you've just seen us produce, we can now use that graph to do a job for us. And what we're going to try and do, I've just got a lump of steel here, and it'd be nice to know uh, the, uh, the, the mass of this lump of steel. So using this setup, we can work out what force is on the end of this spring, because if I put this on the end of the spring, then obviously it's going to extend it, and it's going to extend it to a particular extension. And using our graph, we can now look at the extent, look at the force that would produce an extension of 17.7 centimetres. So if we read off our graph, 17.7 centimetres, that will give us the force, and then we can convert that force to a mass to find out the mass of this unknown block, unknown block of iron. Okay, let's go back to the little challenge we had. We were trying to work out the unknown mass of that lump of, uh, I think it was iron, and we said that it stretched the spring by 17.7 centimetres. Now that was the extended length, we need the extension. So the 17.7 uh, was the, the, the how much it was extended with the uh, lump of iron on it, or steel on it. So let's do that, minus the original length, will give us an extension of 11.7. So if we use our graph, this is about 11.7, if we read off, okay, we think that that's going to be the weight that would give us an extension of 11.7 is about 2.7 newtons. So that 2.7 newtons is a weight, we want to know the mass, so this formula, if you haven't come across it yet, you will do soon, that weight is equal to mass times gravity, so W equals mg, we've got a weight and I want a mass, so if I just rearrange that, I'm going to say mass is equal to weight divided by gravity. We know that gravity on Earth is 10 newtons per kilogram, so 2.7 divided by 10 will give me uh, a mass of 0.27 kilograms or 270 grams.